Hi everyone, welcome to Stylist Autumn Winter 2013 Trend Report. I'm Alex Fullerton, I'm Stylist Fashion Director and we're presenting our comprehensive trend report for the autumn winter season. It's the top 10 catwalk trends as voted for by our readers. I'm going to be talking about all the trends aesthetically and what you need to buy to get the looks for the new season. Hi, I'm Kitty McGee and I'm the Executive Fashion Editor at Stylist Magazine and I'm going to be talking to you about our readers' take on each trend as well as what buyers at leading departments stores thought about each trend as well. The Stylist Trend Report covers the 10 most important trends from the international collections as voted for by our readers. What we did to pull this information together, we asked 513 stylist readers for their views on next season's trends. We then invited a group of readers in to see us to discuss their thoughts on the key trends and we asked buyers to name their favourite trend for autumn winter 2013. So what we know about our readers is that they're heavily influenced by seasonal trends. 80% of our readers look to stylist for trend inspiration. 60% of stylist readers buy a new piece of clothing every month. 70% are loyal to their favourite brands. And our readers' priorities when shopping are to shop for flattering shapes, easy to mix and match separates, and work-appropriate pieces. So our agenda for today is to talk about the top 10 trends, the buyer's picks, and our reader feedback. At the start of our chart at number 10, we have the high shine trend. Who says fashion isn't practical? After spring's focus on brilliant white, which landed at least one fashion director with a giant dry cleaning bill, high shine wet look fabrics are a brilliant contrast, because if you spill something, you can simply wipe them clean. What do the buyers think about the high shine trend? Well, Louise Bailey from House of Fraser said autumn winter is all about wet look pieces, especially skirts and coats in really interesting new fabrics. It may not appeal to everyone, but when it's worn well, it can look really sexy and sophisticated. And what did our readers think? Well, 33% of stylish readers state that a new trend could convince them to buy something outside of their usual comfort zone. And we think this could be that trend. A fifth of stylist readers have already committed to buy a high shine piece next season and key high shine pieces include evening wear and outerwear. The next trend in our chart is the punk reborn trend. Unless you've been hanging out in a hippie commune for the past six months, you'll know that punk is a major thing. Whatever the New York Metropolitan Museum of Art focuses on for its annual Costume Institute exhibition is scrutinised by designers who want to bring a fresh interpretation to a look, and this year it's celebrating punk. For autumn, designers have spun the chaos to couture theme into pretty punk, punk nouveau and even new wave. The signatures that Sid and Nancy championed in the tail end of the 70s are there, There's Larry Tartan, PVC trousers, chains, studs and safety pins, but it's cleaned up, sanitised and so not scary. Key pieces to buy include a mini kilt, preferably leather, and a biker jacket. Add in a smattering of tartan in acid yellow or angry red and strapped, seditionary style boots and you're set. This is a trend that I'm really going to enjoy playing with and interpreting in a realistic way. It's important for our trends to have a stylist twist, as with the grunge story for spring-summer when we gave it a really grown-up, feminine spin. What did the buyers think of the punk reborn trend? Well, Judd Crane, who's the women's wear buying director at Selfridges, said, Punk is an aesthetic we've bought heavily into for next season and is one which is clearly resonating in a big way culturally and really capturing people's imagination. Tartans and plaids proved incredibly versatile this season. From the biker jackets at Yunya Watanabe to San Laurent's slouched cardigans and biker boots. So let's have a look at what our readers thought of the punk trend. A quarter of stylist readers liked the punk reborn trend. Styling is obviously key to this trend and it's about the attitude and the way you wear the pieces as much as the pieces themselves. And as a point of entry, jewellery is great for this trend. 39% of stylist readers are more likely to experiment with jewellery than anything else. At number eight on our chart is the tartan army trend. Clashing tartan is the new digital print mix. Whether you combine different colours in one piece, as at Givenchy, or go for contrasting shades throughout your outfit, as at Celine, it's the most important pattern to wear this autumn. 
Although camouflage is an edgy second choice, it didn't make our top 10 trends. The way that tartan is fresh for this autumn is the clothes it's constructed from. The silhouettes are mainly clean, simple and slick, putting the focus on the print and making it feel bold and unfussy. Something that tartan, with its connotations of Sunday best, has never been able to be before. It's also worth bearing in mind that the grungy checks and plaids of summer won't do for the new season. They're far too floaty for autumn. And next time round, your tartan really needs a substantial edge to set it off. So what did the buyers think of the tartan army trend? Well, Roberta Bentler, who's the founder and MD of Avenue32.com, said tartan is back in a big way this autumn, and there are several influences and ways of wearing it. Brands such as Preen, Suno and Antonio Maras reinterpreted Czech in a new, bold way. This time around, Czech is more polished than grunge, which puts a new spin on this British look. And our readers also really like this trend. 20% of our readers said they'll buy at least one tartan piece next season. And as well as buying designer tartan pieces, stylist readers were really keen to see how the high street interpreted this trend. At number seven on our chart, we have the modern hybrid trend. According to the Stylist Fashion Dictionary, this is a catch-all term to describe clothes that have panels of more than one fabric, print or texture, or items that do double duty. I'm a huge fan of this trend. Anything that allows the creativity of designers to really shine and show off their art is a major plus for me. I think that it was Michael van der Ham who kick-started the mix-match aesthetic, which has now gone so major, with his Spring 2011 collection although this season so many brands have their own take on the technique. However, you need to know that it's also so much more than just piling on as many fabrics as you can find. At Preen, you can turn their skirts around so that they are pencil or full. Dior have double layers of crafty crochet over the chicest houndstooth pencil dresses, and Dries van Noten did layers where tunics were attached to micro kilts and trousers and spliced in different fabrics. Over at Victoria Beckham, she did the simplest version, a chic pony skin panel on a mannish coat. There are many ways to incorporate the hybrid trend, and the great thing is that you can take it at your own pace. So back to what the buyers thought of the modern hybrid trend, Paula Reed, who's a fashion director at Harvey Nichols, agreed with Alex, saying that Michael Vanderham has turned the fabric collage into his signature. Layering textures and patterns on essentially simple shapes creates an almost Baroque femininity that looks very modern at the same time. And what did our readers think of the modern hybrid trend? Well, our readers liked how new and fresh this trend felt. 40% of stylist readers said they'll buy into this trend for next season, and 1 in 10 readers committed to wear this trend head to toe. 10% of our readers said they'll also look to the high street for this trend. In at number six on our chart is supersized outerwear. It's so glib for a fashion director to say that coats are big for autumn. Of course they are, it's cold. But what we have really honed down is the coat you need to invest in this winter. You need something all enveloping that makes you feel cocooned against the world, invincible, and that you can fit a lot of layers under. So, I'm eating my words here, coats are big for autumn but they're also fun, colourful and playful, which makes this trend modern. It's no good rummaging around and pulling out a military greatcoat that your sixth form boyfriend was once wedded to. It's too dull, it's too grungy. Once you've realised that size matters, it's all in the details. Bright colours are key, and deep revere collars are also a key shape to look out for, as you can see at all these shows. From a retail point of view, all the stores we've spoken to are majoring on their oversized coat buys for autumn and really taking notice of this practical trend. So as Alex said, this is a really important trend for the buyers. Ben Matthews, who's the buying manager at netaporter.com, said coats are central to your look this autumn and come in every incarnation, but the more oversized, the better. Richard Nicholl epitomised this trend with his dove grey wool coat, which he paired with slouchy, mannish, formal pants for a luxe casual vibe. And back to what our readers thought, well after the brutal winter last year, our readers were especially responsive to this trend. 45% of stylist readers said that they will invest in an oversized coat this season, and half of those have committed to buy a designer version. (laughs) 
At the halfway point on our chart, we have the trend for menswear fabrics. Menswear is the permatrend that is on constant repeat, but look a little bit closer. You'll see this season it's not just dull old androgyny again. The devil is in the detail, or more accurately, it's in the fabrics. This time around, designers have been inspired by traditional Savile Row plaids, houndstooth, pinstripe and Prince of Wales checks, and they've turned them into something totally unexpected and feminine. Skirt suits, as at Lanvin, flippery skater skirts, as at Stella. These silhouettes will turn any notion of girls who are boys on their head, because these are distinctly girls' clothes with a masculine coating. Conversely, this is one of the most feminine trends of the season, and it looks particularly witty accessorised with black patent Oxfords or the new must-wear monk shoe. So what did the buyers think of the menswear fabrics trend? Well, Laura Labellestier, who's the buying director at Brands, really loved the Savile Row-inspired separates that she saw this season, a look that's perfect for day or night. And over at Brown's, they also already have a waiting list for the Dries van Noten menswear-inspired coats. So what did our readers think about the menswear fabrics trend? Well, stylist readers are always on the lookout for interesting fabrics and textures. Our readers liked how menswear fabrics were cut into feminine shapes for next season. And 41% of our readers will buy into the menswear fabrics trend. Next up, we have the trend for tactile textures. This can really be summarised in the simplest terms. Minimal, clean shapes in fabrics that are cosy, fluffy, soft and teddy bear toasty. If you want to stroke it for autumn winter, you should wear it. Continuing the trend for invincibility that we saw with oversized outerwear, these are clothes that will cosset you and protect you from the big bad world, but still make you look utterly chic. Key fabrics you need to look out for are mohair, angora, boiled wool and boucle. Whether you mix these fabrics with leather for a contradictory take on the trend, or go head to toe with mixed textures, it's really up to you. One of the most refreshing things to note about autumn winter is its mix and match approach. It feels less dictatorial and freer with the looks that we saw on the catwalk. With this trend in particular, my favourite way to wear it is super simple and inspired by Dries van Noten. A huge chunky mohair sloppy joe worn over classic wool trousers. It's easy and chic. So what did the buyers think of the tactile textures trend? Stephanie Jones, who's a women's wear buyer at Liberty, said we saw a wonderful jacquard texture on the catwalk from Richard Nickel this season. And Dries van Noten's collection was full of detailing with super soft textures and herringbone applique running throughout. So what did our readers think of this trend? Well, stylist readers are really drawn to interesting textures. Over 40% of our readers will buy into the tactile textures trend and 15% of our readers will buy a designer version of this trend. We're into the top three now with skirt suits. And this is a trend that I think has really emerged from the street and the way that real people are wearing fashion. For so long, it's been all about the dress, the easy solution to getting ready in the morning. But after a few seasons where trouser suits look freshest, in particular on industry muses like Caroline Issa and Miroslava Duma, designers are reacting to our need for neatness with these sweet polished skirt suits. And these are actually even easier to wear than a dress because they look a lot more chic and considered. They also work for every trend as it's the finish of the suit or the accessories that you can easily switch to suit your mood. If you want to be an absolute slave to the season, then pencil length skirts and belted jackets are the essential elements to shop for. So what did the buyers think of the trend for skirt suits? Well, Eleanor Robinson, who's the women's wear buying manager at mywardrobe.com, said skirt suits offer an elegant alternative to managed tailoring in fabrics. She loved Prada's take on the trend, which looked beautifully dishevelled rather than too prim. And as Alex said, the skirt suit was our readers' third favourite trend for autumn winter. 61% of stylist readers believe investment pieces like the skirt suit are worth the money. And 35% of our readers will invest in a skirt suit next season. The second most popular trend with our readers is something we're calling Think Pink. The colour of autumn winter 2013 is undoubtedly pink. 
It's charmingly refreshing in such a dark season, and its unabashed femininity actually feels really strong when it's cut into simple silhouettes, as you can see at Celine and at Simone Rocha. It's these shapes that really let the colour sing, rather than drowning it out with ruffles and bows. Even when pink is mixed with polka dots, as at Mew Mew, feathers at Dries van Noten, or soft mohair at Jonathan Saunders, admittedly these are all quite girly accents, this season's pink is chic and womanly, it's not prissy or girly, and this is the key detail to note for autumn. One last fact, to reiterate the fact that it's strong pink. Although we associate the colour with baby girls, originally it was boys that wore it. Because pink is basically watered down red, it was deemed stronger and therefore more manly. Who knew? Well, what did the buyers think of the pink trend? Well, Natalie Kingham, who's the women's wear buyer at matchesfashion.com, said pink was her favourite trend for next season too. From dusty antique rose at Roxander Alinchik to hot blush at Carvin and lilac-tinged sherbets at Celine, she predicts everyone will have at least one piece of pink clothing this autumn winter. And what did our readers think of the think pink trend? Well, a massive 50% of our readers said that they'll buy into the pink trend next season. And that's not too surprising when you know that almost half of our readers are more likely to experiment with colour than anything else. And 25% of our readers will also look to their favourite high street brands for pink pieces next season. So we can finally reveal that the most popular trend with our readers, and the one which is going to have the most resonance across the whole season, is the 1940s redux. Nipped waist skirt suits, a soft colour palette, strong shouldered coats. This trend covers almost all of autumn winter's important elements and is incredibly versatile. It also encompasses the new need for 18 hour dressing, from workwear to after dark outfits, and I can't wait to shoot the 40s. Again, you can decide how far you want to take it. Go for a glamorous gown, an elegant coat, or just a top with a sweetheart neckline as at Louis Vuitton. You can jump into the trend or nod to it, but you definitely do well to look back to the past this season. So Leila Yavari, who's the fashion director at stylebop.com, also picked 40s as her favourite trend for next season. And she said of the trend, Paying homage to post-war glamour, the runways were filled with figure-enhancing fits, Skirts with added length and volume, and sleek separates. Think sensible heels, mix and match separates, and flawless tailoring. Over half of stylist readers will buy into the 40s redux trend for autumn winter, and it was the flattering shapes associated with this trend that appealed most to our readers. 25% of our readers will wear this trend head to toe, and one in five will invest in a designer 40s outfit. So what did our readers really think about next season's trends? Well, let's hear it straight from them. There are a couple of trends I really love for autumn winter 2013. The first one I'm going to pick is 1940s. It's so glamorous. Obviously, you've got the whole Mad Men thing. You have the skirts and the shirts that you can wear together, and that seamlessly slips from lunchtime meeting to evening. I'm really excited about the influence of menswear. I particularly love coupons, especially the advertising campaign. It's, uh, I don't know, it just lures me in. I'm really excited that big coats are going to be a trend this season as I'm always, always wearing mine. Big oversized camel coat. I'll even wear it when it's boiling hot outside and I always look for comfort when I'm shopping. The trend I'm most likely to invest in I think that would have to be the mixed media. You've got knits with nets. There's also an amazing trend coming through of two skirts put on top of each other, which I think would be quite fun. Easy places to shop for that trend would be All Saints. They always do mixed media really well. Other things that I'm loving for next season, pink. Finally, it's uh, you know a little bit of kind of summer, you know, in, in winter, how fantastic. So much inspiration around me. Acne, Isabel Moran, Celine as well. I love like this is slimline, really clean cut stuff. So I do look for things like that in Cos um, and like and on other stories, which is a new one, which is amazing. The staples really, you know, I think a lot of people just kind of go to H and M or Zara, you know, a white T-shirt, a very simple dress. But actually, when it comes to uh, buying a jacket or a great pair of shoes or especially a handbag. Um, it's definitely worth spending more money. 
I think my outfit right now, top to toe, probably cost about a thousand pounds. Um, but actually, when you spend just a little bit more money, it does it does make a real difference, and, and you know, it kind of makes you feel a bit better during the day. <laughs> One of my favourite pieces I've ever bought is my um, two hundred pound Michael Kors watch. I don't usually spend that much on one item but I just I know I just wear it every single day I get loads of comments on it so it was well worth it I reckon. <laughs> My favourite place to go shopping is uh, the Bluebird on Kings Road it's always gorgeous and they've they've got some really fresh fabulous designers in there. Thanks for listening to Stylist's Trend Report for Autumn Winter 2013. We hope you've learned everything you need to know about the new season. So now all that's left to do is go shop.